Ah, Veligion, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and today we're gonna do our Venos starting moves guide. And this video will be showing how you can go from some of the worst national ideas as Venice to some of the best by switching over to a secret nation through cultural conversion. Aside from that, we're gonna also establish a true trading empire in Europe and crush the Ottomans in the first few years of the game. So to start it off, we're gonna be deleting our forts in Corfu as well as the one in Spa. Palato. These two are absolutely useless. And one more thing we're going to do is we're going to invite the knights to our trade league. If we don't do this, they're going to get invited by somebody else such as Ragusa or Genoa. And you don't want that to happen. You want them to be in your trade league. We're going to invite the Cypriots as well if we want to. It's going to be of great service since it means that these nations are giving you their trade power in exchange for almost nothing. You can even do this with Telia and all the other one province miners around. Venice does not have any states but it does have a vassal at the start make sure you divert trade from your vassal and we're also going to be slackening recruitment to get rid of the five percent professionalism and get a little bit more manpower so that afterwards we can actually recruit the free company here and we're also going to be sending our troops over to the border with the serbians since we will be doing a pro gamer move in just a few moments before we do that pro gamer move we're going to get some alliances honestly anything you can get as an alliance in uh, italy is fine for example you can go for a Florence or you can go for Savoy. Both of these are pretty great. One amazing nation is Aragon, but it's not always going to be available. Sometimes they are going to rival you. Make sure you also cancel your proclaim guarantee on the Albanians since this is basically a waste of our diplo slot and we want to have a truce for five years with them since we will be attacking them also shortly. We're going to be recruiting a general and sadly we didn't get any siege pips, but that is A-OK. -okay. And we're also going to do our pro gamer move here of releasing the nation of Montenegro Negro as one of our vassals. Why are we doing this? Well, it is very easy. It is because we want Montenegro's cores to be fed back. So on the 11th of December, what we're going to do is we will be attacking the Serbians to feed back Montenegro's core to them. We also can get some new rivals. By releasing Montenegro, you're stronger than you were at the start of the game, so you have to get new rivals. And it also means that we're getting some more power projection, so that's a double win right there. I have to be very clear about this. On the 11th of December, you want to use your reconquest on the Serbians and you can also cobelligerate the Bosnians if you want since we want to take the Bosnian lands also. If you don't do it on the 11th of December, 100% the Ottomans are going to guarantee the Serbs and by the time that you attack Byzantium, which likely will ally Serbia, you will not be able to cobelligerate Serbia because it's going to be proclaimed guaranteed by the Ottomans. So it's important we do the Serbian war first and then afterwards we do the Byzantine war or even at the same time we can finish both of these easily. Transfer the rest of the troops uh, into the Bosnian lands and we're also going to be protecting trade in the Alexandrian trade node which means we're going to transfer a lot more trade towards Venice. The easiest way to win such wars where the enemy army has a very small army that runs around is wait until they engage that is movement lock into a province. So in my case they are not going to be able to run away from Kolubara. We're going to send our army in there and we're going to wipe out the Serbian army in one battle. At the same time keep on sieging the provinces of the Bosnian so that we make sure that we take them out of the war fast and uh, annex Bosnia fully first before we uh, do the same with the Serbs here. And there you go, the Serbian army was decimated. We can now chase them down a little bit so that we actually do a bit of damage there and make sure they never recover from this. There you go, the uh, Bosnian army was also stack wiped and we are sieging down everything. Actually, they're retreating to tell you, so we're going to have to siege that down also. The special Venetian government type allows you, once your leader dies, to hire another leader from three of available options with different stats so that's one really great thing about the uh, Venetian government it's that you don't have bad rulers since you have three choices or you can let the lottery decide for you if that's what you want the Bosnians make a great vassal since we can feed them the cores on Herzegovina after this war so we are going to vassalize them get the money and cancel rivalry to get extra prestige and with the Bosnians as our vassals we can now declare war on Herzegovina for the reconquest here we actually have to wait for a few days because we uh, just got our diplomat back from there and now we can attack however and chase him down take all of that stuff and give it to Bosnia now that the sieges are finished we're gonna peace out Telia first and we will ask for trade power war reps and a bit of cash and when it comes to the Serbs it is gonna be a full annexatio we're taking everything here for ourselves except the one province in Zeta which is gonna go to Montenegro uh, coalition wise not much just Herzegovina and Valachia but we don't care about any of those nations so we are 
a-okay. Take note, there's a gold mine in Kosovo, so you want to bring this up to 10 production development so we can get as much money from it as possible. We also can attack the uh, Byzantines now, and I recommend that you do so. It is vital that we take them as a vassal before they get either wiped out by the Ipirates here or whatever might be the case. Make sure you have superiority in the Aegean Sea before you do attack, however. We finished sieging Herzegovina, we transferred it to Bosnia, so now we're giving it to Bosnia for two aggressive expansion, take all the money they have as well, and send the army back to kill the Separatists because we kind of forgot about them. The Byzantine War is going good. Take note that it is possible that the Ottomans are going to attack the Byzantines when you are at war with them, which is likely what will happen in my case, since they started paying for their forts and uh, they stopped drilling their armies. If that is the case, you have to be the first one to take charge of the Siege of Constantinople so that you can uh, vassalize them and then be in a defensive war against the Ottomans. Similarly, you want to get the fort in the south of Greece too, for about the same reasons as the ones I just mentioned. The battle for Valachia is over. I'm going to get the money and I'm also going to go for the war reps. I'm not going to cancel the Ottomans guaranteeing them because I'm going to use that in uh, the nearby future and you'll see why. It is a five head or maybe even six head move. That means we can also uh, vassalize the Byzantines finally and we can cancel our guy here as well. We're going to keep their religion because we want them to be orthodox. Coalition wise, just Valachia and Byzantium. So absolutely nothing to be worried about. Also, Epirus took a few Byzantine lands. So that actually is great for us because we can now just declare reconquest war three provinces against the Epirates. Their army is surprisingly also in uh, Herzegovina for some reason. So we can destroy that very fast as well. And make sure you use your fleet to blockade their coastline so you can siege down stuff fast. Sadly, the Ottomans did not attack the Byzantines as I was expecting them to, but it's okay. It's actually better for us since after we've consolidated Epirus, we are going to be much stronger and more ready to take on the Ottomans. This quick war is over and we can now take all of the provinces. Three of them go to Byzantium, of course, and another one goes to us directly. So now, because of this, our vassals might be a little bit disloyal since they do consider themselves to have a lot of strength compared to us. Make sure you get another rival. Hungary seems like a good choice. We can even send them an insult so we get enough PP to get extra mana points. And whichever one of your vassals is disloyal, you can always either placate them or develop their provinces once, or if not, you can just improve relations with them. As long as you have a truce with your vassals, no one is going to support their independence. Okay, seriously, the Ottomans are actually struggling with Epirus. Epirus has 19% war score, and they have their main capital here sieged down because they sieged down the Ottomans' capital. Epirus is the next five head right now. Who will win, guys? Who will win? Epirus versus versus Goliath here. The Ottomans have attacked Albania and they finished their war with Trebizond, so even though they didn't annex Trebizond by the way. So I am going to attack them now, it is probably the best moment to attack. I am going to set the province of Gelibolu as my war target and I have sent all of my army here. I've also started integrating both of my smaller vassals so that whilst I am in the war with the Ottomans, I'm also going to be integrating those bad boys. Alright, we're going to start moving towards Gelibolu. We've also set up our awesome three siege general and we have our main fleet in the Sea of Marmara so we should be able to barrage and take this very fast in the war. The reason we're not doing the Selenik trick is because they've already maintained it for the fort in Albania and they've maintained everything else by the way for the fort in Albania from before. Gonna have to cancel divert trade as it seems that is not something that Naxos likes. There we go we can now barrage this for 50 military points that means we're gonna take it pretty fast before the Ottomans even know what happened. I absolutely love this three siege guy. I've taken Gelibolu, Edirne, and most of Anatolia, whilst the Ottomans got a minus 57% in Treviso, where their army is fully attritioning for a few turns now. Also, not happy about the fact that the mountain fort fell in two tick. Not even kidding, two ticks, one of the hardest places to siege down. At this point, it actually turned into a race between who can siege who faster, and sadly, they actually started increasing their siege ability here. Also, they got uh, military tech five so if we do have engagements it's not gonna be amazing we did have a few which we actually uh, won but we did lose a few also and I do have a lot less troops than they do so technically I want to avoid actual engagements with the Ottomans for the time being we'll finish sieging whatever we can in Anatolia and do a nice uh, peace treaty for around 80% or so is this what they mean by beautiful Ottoman carpets because I definitely think this is a beautiful Ottoman carpet siege and the first Ottoman carpet siege war has been won 
we will be going for these provinces as well as uh, all the cash that we can take from them coalition wise obviously nobody would join because nobody cares about albania and Buya firstus warus finitus now we have a bit of a dilemma in normal games i would actually release bulgaria and feed them all of these cores which means a lot less aggressive expansion for me this is not a normal game we're playing as a republic and we are struggling with integrating vassals of republic so because of that we will be using these lands as our power base rather than releasing bulgaria that means we're going to make these full cores and we're going to take bulgaria for ourselves in the next war so that means in the next war we'll be taking the rest of the cores for our byzantine vassal but until that point we'll focus on integrating uh, some of our vassals bosnia and montenegro for the time being as well as uh, recovering our economy and just being an awesome trade nation we're also in the process of converting our nation to dalmatian you might have noticed this uh, in the screen over here once we have 50 percent dalmatian in our nation we will be um switching over to dalmatian as our primary culture and as such we'll be forming the nation of dalmatia which has some of the most amazing national ideas in the game and the ottomans pieced out albania they didn't fully annex them somehow so i'm gonna attack them and this means i'm calling in florence which is great because i can stack wipe their army fairly easy from here it also means that uh i can get the trade power from the florentines as such i'll be establishing myself in the best trade node in the zone here the uh, genoan trade node except mine is quite better off right now surprising and it looks like they have a fleet so we're gonna have to kill off their fleet too let's go here boys you might be wondering what is this blue unit here this is a marine the venetians get marines from their missions five percent of their army can be marines until the end of the game by just going 100 percent force limit and having 60 percent sailors so these guys are awesome because they don't take up manpower they take sailors when you recruit them and whenever they need to be reinforced this war was fairly easy we're gonna be taking the trade power from the florentines war reps cash and cancel their rivals for extra prestige from albania we're gonna just fully annex them and you might be wondering why on earth did you take Kataro from uh, montenegro well that is because it's gonna make it easier for me to annex them since they only have one province left and it's gonna basically be a few ticks now like i said before as republics you will really struggle to integrate your vassals so three vassals maximum is more than enough well 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 if it's not the ottomans attacking their friendly neighborhood karaman it is and that means i can also attack the ottomans but hey ludi you have a truce with them a very long truce this is true but the ottomans have small brains so they are guaranteeing ragusa which means if i attack ragusa after i get my uh, diplomat back from here of course then the ottomans are gonna join in this war so let's do that we're gonna actually fully annex ragusa and we're gonna take advantage of the fact that the ottomans are in this war and we will absolutely drain them of cash we're not gonna take any provinces because it would be double the cost when it comes to aggressive expansion and diplo points since they're not cobalage rated and the beautiful part about the fact that we own both constantinople and gallipoli and we have a superiority in the sea of marmara which means the ottoman navy cannot destroy our navy well because of this all of the balkans is ours without even having to fight for it because the ottomans cannot even cross into the balkans through the straits of marmara here that means we can focus on ragusa and their allies the uh nation of ferrara before we move back and uh, focus on the rest of the ottomans so i've gotten enough war score with the ottomans to piece them out i got as much money as i can get from them and that means i got a shorter truce than i had before also now i just need to focus on the nation of ferrara which crushed my fleet somehow so now i have to rebuild my fleet as well feels bad man feels bad and despite not cobalage rating ferrara we are going to take the city of ferrara itself since we really want to get that place for its trade power it actually has a buttload of trade power 23 which is massive since it is in our main trade node the venetian trade node and because of the same reason we are fully annexing ragusa so we get all the trade power in the ragusan trade node what do you know it's named after ragusa so now we will core these up of course it's gonna be a little bit costly admin wise because we already have these made as states and we are in the process of rebuilding our fleet which was absolutely crushed by the ferraran fleet we also are getting claims on mantua and bologna since eventually once we get a chance to and our a lowers a little bit we will attack these two nations mantua is the last city with high trade power in the venetian trade node so once we manage to secure mantova we will always have above 80 or 90 percent trade power in venice 
Ottomans. Whilst waiting for my truce to expire with the Ottomans, I've also attacked and fully sieged down the Knights. I'm gonna annex them because I don't want them to start raiding my coastline later on once I turn to Orthodoxy because that is on the table. I do intend on switching on over to Orthodoxy. Our truce is over once more with the Ottomans. We're gonna send our ships back to the Sea of Marmara in order to get ready for this war. And I just want to point out, we already have 10 ducats on the plus with our land force limit at maximum and over our navy force limit. This is how powerful this nation is economically. So once we lose our manpower pool, if we do in the war, we simply are just going to start hiring mercenaries since we have more than enough money to do so. Take care, however, since the Ottoman navy is going to be pretty strong at this point in the game. Do not underestimate the Ottomans whatsoever as that can be the end of your run. So we're gonna start sieging everything down here and we're gonna send a few more troops in this area. The great part is that because we do hold the Sea of Marmara they still cannot come into the Balkans. So after we're done with this we're gonna carpet siege the rest of uh, the Ottoman Empire as we go along. Make sure you take out their fleets if you get a chance to and you engage early on in the game. Oh it seems like they are the target of a crusade as well or actually the Tunisians are and they are also in my war. So I have the crusade bonus too which is gonna come in handy massively during this war and after the second carpet war we can piece them out again wait is this the second or the third i can't remember anyway we are taking all of these lands and giving all the rest of byzantine lands to the byzantine and taking a little bit of cash as well we're not going for 100 percent because we actually want the truce to expire in 94 since that is right after we finish uh, culture converting venice itself to dalmatian albeit we probably can switch to dalmatian right after this one is finished actually next month right now in fact so we got 47 percent dalmatian which means that if we unstate for example this no more statius we have 50 percent dalmatian and there you go boys culture shift to dalmatian which means that we now can form the kingdom of dalmatia as long as we have less than 11 cities so how are we gonna do that well there's a couple of options option number one we can just release vassals and feed the vassals all the cores or we can have a fake war where we make one nation take all of our provinces or a couple of nations take all of our provinces which means that we still have our cores on them so in the next war we can take back i probably should not have expanded as much as i did i actually regret it now i just realized i completely forgot about the fact that you need to have less than 11 cities so right now it's pretty much a massive bra moment since we have 44 cities not 11 <laughs> We can release the nations of Bulgaria and the nation of Serbia and then afterwards we can feed both Bulgaria and Serbia the cores in the Balkans and even the Byzantines we can feed them the rest of the cores in the Balkans here so I'm gonna speed that up a little bit. We cannot give them the provinces of Zara and Spalato since we do need these two provinces in order to form Dalmatia so what I am gonna do instead I'm gonna get another vassal in the province of Verona and feed my Veronese vassal the provinces not the most optimal of games Games, but definitely doable. Now we can uh, form Dalmatia, restore the kingdom of Zalmatia, get the new traditions and ambitions, and we also lost our government reform. Basically, you have to uh, choose between noble elite or Italian Signoria. You also can form Croatia if you want to, but take note that if you form Dalmatia, you manage to keep the Venetian missions, so you can still technically be Venice with insanely great ideas that include trade efficiency, morale of armies, morale of navies, infantry combat ability, core creation cost, naval force limit, dev cost reduction, trade power abroad, and even unrest reduction. If I was to do this a second time, I likely would just unstate the state of Venice after I've changed my capital to Spalato Ozara, and that would mean that I can just form Dalmatia from 1444 rather than do this and have to lose all of my land. I guess the moral of this story, guys, is don't have the memory of a humming Bird. This also means that we do get access to our estates, so of course we're gonna be summoning the diet and going for whichever agenda best suits us first off and seizing land in a while. We do have a lot more uh, crownlands for to start off with, so that's pretty good for us. And you can integrate these guys a lot faster now, especially since you can give the plus two strong duchies privilege, which means that they're gonna actually be loyal. On the other hand, if you do decide to form Dalmatia early game, which means that you cannot do the strat with Montenegro and that the Ottomans are likely gonna proclaim guarantee and destroy both of Serbia.
Serbia and Byzantium, it does mean that you likely will not be expanding this much in the Balkans and that will be very small and expanding very slowly up until the 1500 with having this much land probably in 1550 or after as the Ottomans are going to be extremely powerful by the 1470s if you haven't taken the Byzantine lands from them as well as the rest of the Balkans. Idea wise I went for quantity first and obviously go for trade ideas as your second idea said but if you do the strat with the vassals here then I recommend that you go for influence ideas second so you can annex them faster and then as a third idea either trade or economic or even religious is pretty good. And guys if we get 3000 likes on this video I am gonna do a second part for this yes that is correct even though this seems like a disaster you shall see that Dalmatia will prevail. So hit that like button and don't forget to also subscribe if you have not already. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.